Today I'd like to do a product review of the Anchor Powerhouse. This has a huge capacity of 120 amps, so 120,600 milliamp hours, which is just crazy. It has multiple output ports on it. I've had this one on loan from Anchor for around 10 days now. I've put it through its paces and time to do the review. There's a lot to cover for this video, so let's just get right down to it, the Anchor Powerhouse. Again, the powerhouse comes in at a whopping 120,600 milliamp hours, which is 434 watt hours. It's a V1 product, so it's on the expensive side. It's around the same price as a small Honda generator at $500, although this is no generator, but maybe an alternative for certain applications. Again, this is a silent DC-AC power inverter. There's no fumes, and it has a simple user operation. Let's go through a few of the specifications. So it's a little on the heavy side, weighing in at 9.5 pounds, which is 4.3 kilograms. With regard to the size, it's larger than an old school Nintendo GameCube, more along the size of a car battery. And you have multiple modes on this battery. So you have an input mode uh, with a long 10 foot long AC adapter cable for DC 16.8 uh, volts, 7.5 amps. And then you have three output modes. The first output mode is DC mode, which is a 12 volt, a 10 amp, similar to what you have with your your vehicle cigarette lighter. You also have four USB ports uh, at five volts. Those are set. So we have six amps, 2.4 amps maximum per port. And then we have that AC adapter over there. So that's 110 volts at 1.29 amps at 60 hertz. And all of those output modes are activated using a button that you would press on there that illuminates an LED. Again, to use one of the output modes, you have to press the button on there to say that you want to use it. It doesn't auto detect that you've connected to the AC port, for example, or through a USB port. You have to select the button and then you have that nice LCD panel at the top of the powerhouse, which indicates multiple things, whether you have a phone tablet connected, it'll indicate the power level and also the time left of the current output. And they have it by a 30 H, so 30 hours as the maximum and it'll dwindle down from there. I'd probably prefer for this to be a percentage level like 90% and start decrementing down, uh, but they use a different uh, format for that. I think that the powerhouse is best designed for certain use cases. So basically situations when you can't use a real generator due to noise and fumes. For example, in an apartment or condo during a power outage, for example. Also camping during quiet hours where you can't just be running a generator all night long. Also uh, traveling with electronics while on the road, uh, not by air, which we'll talk about later. And then also for trade shows or conventions that you want to have, you want to power electronics like an LCD monitor, but you don't have a power outlet available. Uh, the powerhouse will work really great in these situations. The best use case that I see for the powerhouse is to power a CPAP machine. So people that have sleep apnea require a CPAP machine for sleeping. CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. Basically it houses an air pump that supplies a constant and steady air pressure for treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. I have a few family members that use a CPAP machine and they basically require it. They're not going to go anywhere without their CPAP machine. They're not going to go camping. If there's a power outage, they're going to go somewhere that does have power so they could plug in their CPAP machine to an AC out outlet. So uh, during my testing with the powerhouse, it was able to provide a CPAP machine with 2.5 to 2.75 nights of sleeping. So not a full uh, three nights of eight hour sleep, but pretty close to it. I thought that was still pretty good. And I thought it beat a generator uh, due to the lack of noise and fumes, especially when you consider it being used for camping. I went through many different test scenarios using the powerhouse for providing power to multiple devices. So the basics using the USB ports or things like your smartphone, your tablets, which works just fine as all Anchor products do. But using that AC port, you're able to provide power to things like a laptop, uh, televisions, uh, mini fridges, and uh, you name it. Basically, as long as that AC port doesn't exceed 160 watts, it's gonna provide power to it. If it does exceed 160 watts, the port's just gonna automatically shut off. So things like a hair dryer, a microwave oven, uh, larger mini fridges, it's just going to kick that 120 watts and it's going to just shut down the port and basically you have to disconnect the device, uh, press the AC power button to reset the output. So some of the mini fridges that I tested, uh, they would exceed that 160 watts. So to test this, I used a test device called Kilowatt Electricity Usage Monitor and basically just monitored the watts uh, going to the devices and basically whenever it went past that 60 watts, it was killing the, the port on there. So it worked as advertised. Since I had this device on loan, I wasn't able to do extended testing of it. For example, verifying how long it could last in a closet uh, without having a charge to it. So basically, Anchor describes to preserve the battery lifespan, use and recharge at least once every four months. 
Let's go over the internals. Now Anchor doesn't design the powerhouse to be opened by the customer. It's kind of difficult to do. Some people have dissected it, although you have to go through a little bit of trouble, like having to remove the feet from the bottom of the powerhouse to expose uh, hidden screws and everything's kind of soldered and glued together. But the people that have have identified that there's 36 18650 batteries included in the powerhouse, and they're the ones that are wrapped in like that red wrapper, and they're, they're soldered or glued on to multiple planes. So you have two ground planes of nine batteries each and then you have one center plane with 18 batteries. So if you take that total capacity of 120,600 milliamp hours divided by 36 batteries, that means that each battery is 3350 milliamp hours. So again, Anchor doesn't design this to be self-service, so everything's soldered and glued together and kind of difficult to open up, so you're going to want to use that 18-month limited warranty that Anchor provides for the powerhouse. Now let's go through the pros and cons, starting off first with the pros. So the first pro on this list is just the huge capacity, 120,600 milliamp hours. That's just crazy. It's by far the largest battery that I've ever tested. I thought the previous one that I tested, which was 26,000 milliamp hours, was the largest one. This one just kind of blew it away. So uh, the next pro that I have is basically the simple design. It's very it's intuitive to use. I like the LCD panel on it. It provides a, a good information. Uh, the rubber feet on the bottom, I really liked. It prevents it from sliding on uh, smooth surfaces. That's uh, something I don't really like with other external batteries. They, I find that they always slide around and sometimes fall off your desk. Uh, with this one, it's going to lock into place due to those rubber feet. I found that the USB ports perform as I would expect from Anchor products, which is really good. Using my USB power monitors, uh, they perform just like they did with the Powerhouse Plus, for example. Uh, the other output ports performed as advertised with that 160 watt output limit for AC. So again, you're not going to use this for microwaves or for hair dryers, uh, but you will use this for other things like your laptop. I even used it for a nebulizer uh, for baby prepper. So it's things with just a smaller uh, watt output. And then the, the last pro that I have is it's just incredibly compact with a nice handle on it. It's very easy to carry. I actually, I really, really like the handle. It's very comfortable and it's just a nice compact size with a lot of different features in it. Before moving on to the cons, I just wanted to list out the manufacturer messages that are included in the user manual because I found that a lot of them were some of the cons that I had with this particular product. So basically, if you look at the user manual, it's going to list the following messages from the manufacturer. So don't expose to liquids, don't disassemble, avoid dropping, Avoid extreme temperatures. It has an 18-month limited warranty, lifetime technical support. So when I'm 90 years old, I may be calling Anchor regarding the powerhouse. So the majority of the cons that I have listed are mostly due to this being a version one product, and I think a couple little tweaks could be made to it to help improve it. So right off the bat, uh, the price tag is pretty high at $500. I would probably prefer to this to be in that $399 range, for example. It's on the heavy side at 9.5 pounds, so this isn't something that you're going to want to throw in a backpack, for example. That's a lot of weight to include in a backpack when you have other gear. It's just a little bit on the heavy side. Currently, it's for the United States only. So so you cannot travel by air with this. It's ground shipping only, and that's most likely uh, due to the 100 uh, watt hour limit for flight. That was something that I ran into with the PowerCore Plus that I last tested, which was 26,000 milliamp hours, and that was just, just under that 100 watt hour limit for flight. This one far exceeds that at, at 434 watt hours, so you can only travel uh, by ground with this. You can't bring this on an airplane. It's not weather resistant. There's no IPX rating with this. So, and I felt that this product is geared towards outdoor use, like camping, survival for a base camp. Uh, at a minimum, I would like to see some faceplate or shielding for all the ports, similar to what you see uh, for vehicle ports. For example, your auxiliary, your cigarette lighter, oftentimes have some kind of shielding on there just to protect it. I would probably prefer to this to include some kind of neoprene case, uh, similar to what you would get with a GoPro, which is a similar price of $500. Uh, just some kind of casing to help protect uh, this. It's kind of an expensive product. You want to make sure it remains nice for a long time. I would prefer something similar to a Pelican style case to aid with traveling. I noticed at times that there was accidental button activation due to the buttons uh, being exposed at all, all times and not being protected in any way. So for example, if you had it in a bag or a backpack, uh, those buttons are just going to turn on uh, while you're traveling due to accident, accidental activation. Having some kind of case would prevent that.
The next con that I have listed is kind of minor. Uh, basically the solar panel that they advertise it being applicable with is not included uh, with the powerhouse, but I kind of expect that, you know, they, they're kind of separate standalone products in my opinion. Uh, but since this is geared towards survivalists and emergency preparedness, I think that some people would probably want to have that solar panel uh, and it's not ready at the time of this particular video. Uh, converting DC to AC is not really efficient, especially when you get to this large a size of a capacity battery. It's a uh, more practical to use something like a vehicle cigarette lighter in many cases. So if you're camping and you want to uh, charge your laptop, for example, you'd probably be better off being in your truck and having an adapter in your cigarette lighter uh, than doing the DC AC uh, converting uh, with the powerhouse. So this again, this is for uh, specialized use cases in, in my opinion. Uh, there's no auto detect of the USB ports. So there's been times where I've forgotten to, uh, actually any of the ports. There's been times where I forgot to press the button, which is a feature that I just kind of expect now from Anchor products and other chargers like the PowerCore Plus, uh, where I just plug it in, it recognizes that a device is there. With the powerhouse, you want to make sure that you activate whatever output port that you wanted to use in there. And, and don't forget about that. I found that uh, sometimes I did forget. The next con that I have listed is regarding the LCD indicators. Uh, I find that they don't match up well with the buttons that are being pressed. For example, there's different indicators on um, whether you have a, a smartphone connected to it, or it's in AC mode, or it's in USB mode, or DC mode. When you're pressing those buttons, it'll have an indicator appear on that LCD, uh, but it doesn't really line up with the exact port that you're pressing. I would prefer for it to appear right above the port that you're pressing. So when you press the AC port right above it, it should say AC mode. It's kind of off a little bit, in my opinion. I would also prefer for the button LED uh, that indicates that it's on to be located above the output port, not below it, just for better visibility. I didn't actually notice that there was an LED indicator light uh, for that particular port when it was turned on. I thought it was just that LCD panel. I just happened to notice it. I think it would be uh, more visible if it was located directly above the port that you were uh, selecting. Uh, and then the last con that I have with the uh, powerhouse is it's impossible to self-service yourself. So it's not designed to be disassembled by the customer. Everything's basically soldered, glued into position. You have to, if, for example, if you want to open it up, you have to take off the rubber uh, feet on it and uh, you know, do a little bit of a jerry rigging, for example. So you really have to trust Anchor's battery management system for proper cell balancing of the 36 individual cells. I just worry a little bit that if one of the battery craps out, for example, and you're past that 18 month limited warranty you might be screwed uh, hopefully that's not the case I haven't had a problem with my anchor uh, products uh, but that's just something I'm uh, conscious of and, and a little bit worried about with regard to the servicing it would be kind of nice if I could just replace a dead battery uh, whenever I wanted to if that were to happen now that we've gone over the pros and cons, let's start talking about some of the competitor devices to the powerhouse. I think that the powerhouse is best served for customers that they just want to buy a product, not have to monkey and do their own assembly, for example. They just wanted to buy it, have it work, intuitive design to it. Uh, but other people may want to build their own alternative setup uh, using some kind of inverter like a signed 400 watt inverter. Uh, one option is to use a UPS, a universal power supply, which is a totally different use case, but kind of similar functionality for a much reduced price you could get a really nice uh, UPS for $150. Uh, another alternative which is much more expensive is the Juicebox MK2 which is $950. Also the Goal Zero Yeti 400 which has a lot more specs available in my opinion. It's probably $100 cheaper but it's also three times as heavy. And then the last alternative product might be the Tracer Life PO4 battery pack which is 50 to 75 percent the price, half the weight at 4.4 pounds or two kilograms. It's even waterproof at uh, IP64. It, it comes with a neoprene case, and basically you just need some 12 volt adapters for like your USB ports or your AC uh, output ports. And those are some of the competitor devices to the powerhouse. In summary, at this point I feel that the version 1 of the Anchor Powerhouse has more of a specific customer base. So again, I think its best use case is as a companion to a CPAP machine for camping and for power outages. It's better for community living customers such as people living in apartments, condos, dorm rooms, and other locations when a generator just isn't applicable due to noise and fumes. Also, I think it'd be great for business purposes, for conventions, trade shows, that you need power, but you don't have it to power any kind of monitor. So to expand the customer base, I think the following changes could be made. So basically lower the price, uh, maybe by $100. Do, uh, do more to make it more weather, weather resistant, like adding uh, outlet covers or a faceplate. 
uh, include some kind of case to protect. Uh, it's an expensive product, a piece of electronics. So include a, a case with it to avoid accidental activation and also additional weatherproofing. And I think just a general improvement of the layout of the button LEDs and one-to-one -one matching of the LCD panel icons to the button that's being pressed on it. And I think that just doing those little tweaks to it would help expand the customer base. That's going to do it for this video featuring the Anchor Powerhouse. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. I've left all the product information down in the description box below. Please leave your comments below in the comment section and stay tuned for future videos. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one featuring the Anchor Powerhouse. See you guys next time.